One of them wanted to be the security guy. He claimed he was a security guy. Welcome to Security Guy Radio. What's your name? My name is Stuart Rowling, and I'm with uh, Felco by Schneider Electric, but today I'm representing OMBIF. What's that stand for? OMBIF is an uh, industry alliance of manufacturers that come together to create standards to help IP video surveillance and IP access control products and all aspects of physical security work in the market. So it's, it's an organization? It's an organization, Is it yes. organized as a, like a, a corporation or a, just a membership or what? Yes, it's a membership. It's a, it's a non-profit. Um, non-profit, okay. A non-profit organization that basically recruits manufacturers, and we have over 500 manufacturer members. That's a huge membership. It is. It's yeah. We have a lot of people. Um, when we look at that list and you look at the show floor here at IC West, you'll see a lot of crossover. Most of the major manufacturers um, on the show floor today will be will be OMBIF members. How does OMBIF help our industry, security industry? Well, you look at a lot of the problems that we've had in the industry as we transition to IP. We have a lot of proprietary pro protocols. Yeah, the proprietization, you know, your your BIOS doesn't work on somebody else's system. That's a big right. problem. Yeah, Exactly. So OMBIF was formed in order to help address that issue. So the, all of the different manufacturers get together and get to work on making a standard that all the manufacturers can then implement that allows ease of interconnection and interoperability, uh, providing end users, installers, a way to swap out with different like products from different manufacturers. And how do you achieve that standardization? What, do you have a word for it besides standardization? Or how do you do it? Yeah, we, 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 we generate the specification, we let the manufacturers implement it, and then we allow them to go through what we call the conformance process. This is a process where the manufacturers will look at their product, they'll use the test tool that OMBIF provides, which runs thousands of tests on the product. Thousands? Okay. Thousands of like tests. Like a benchmark. It's a benchmark. Yeah, right. And then out at the end of that, if all the tests pass, they'll spit out a document that says the test results, as well as a document that is the uh, de declaration of conformance. They then sign that, submit it to the OMBIF office, that is reviewed, and if there's any issues, we'll get back to the manufacturer. If there are none, it goes on the OMBIF website. Now, how do you handle things like uh, Sony, I, I'm guessing Sony might be a member, maybe I'm wrong. Sony is a founding member, yes. Okay, so Sony has a you know Wazoo 7K camera and Secret Squirrel patents and things like that. They're just bringing them up to a standard, but they're not sharing technology with competitors, I guess. No, I mean, if you're looking at how the image pipeline works in the hardware or how the IOP works, whatever it is, yeah. th that is not something you expose on the network as an API. So what they do expose is how do I get the video from point A to point B, and that's the thing that we can actually work on standardizing. Oh, interesting, all right. So what if I take Omnif and stick it on my business card and I'm not really an Omnif member? What do you guys do about it? Well, if, if you're not an Omnif member and you put it in your business card then, and we find out about it, we will be in contact. We have to protect the brand of Omnif. And last year we launched an enforcement campaign and an education campaign in order to go look at where in the market there might be false claims of conformance and where in the market people might be using the OMBIF logo and the OMBIF brand incorrectly. Right. We call it education because a lot of the time we had to go there and chat with people and say, did you realize you, this is a process to this? And by doing so, we actually increased our membership and we got more conformant products launched. So they may not have been malicious about it. They just may have thought, right. you it, know. It's an industry standard. Why can't we use it? Yeah. And, uh, and they just went down that process. Once we brought them in and had that conversation with them, then they understand it better and they follow the guidelines. So you're going to create a profile. That's what you call the standard, is it the conforming? Con what is it? Right. So we have a core specification, which is right. a technical document. But then we, we create profiles in order to make the understanding, the concept of what a section of that specification is. The, the standards are split into what we call profiles, and these are basically feature sets that cover a specific use case. For example, our first profile, Profile S, was aimed at the connectivity of, of network video and audio, uh, pan tilt, zoom controls, authentication, the, the core necessities in a video management system. And that was our first profile. Then we moved on to a uh, follow-up profile, profile uh, C, which is focused around access control, simple device access control, you know, opening doors, door control, things like that. Um, then the third profile that we released last year was profile G, and that was about storage and content management, everything you need to do to be able to store and retrieve video 
from a VMS or onboard storage and cameras. Now, do you have to buy into this to want to do the standardization? Here's my deal. When I was at Fox and Disney, I was a buyer, right? Mm -hmm. So I bought all these Ashes control systems and all these camera systems and some, like, I can't remember the name of it, um, and some used HID cards, right? Right. Generic, and then some were proprietary. And if I didn't have their BIOS and their proprietary stuff and their software, I couldn't work any other systems with mine. Right. So your organization attempts to make standards for those things so everybody works together right. and that benefits the group as a whole. Yes, and you, there is no, if you're buying a product that has on with conformance, there's no, we don't um, encourage our manufacturers to make that a, a differentiator. It's a, the whole purpose of everybody having the same thing. The manufacturers that participate in the standards development or our members, they do contribute financially. So we have uh, four tiers of membership. The top tier, which is the um, full member, um, and then there's a contributing member, and those two can get involved in the working groups and help drive the standard. And then we have a user member. A user member is just a manufacturer, potentially, who, who wants to claim conformance. Nobody can claim conformance unless they're a member of OMBIF and have submitted the conformance documents and the conformance, followed the conformance process. So define the word conformance. Well, conformance to us, in a, let's take an example of a camera. Always best to talk through examples. Yeah. With a camera, we, OMBIF provides its members a test tool. The test tool runs a gamut of tests and it takes quite a while and out, at the end of it, it outspits a report that shows what passed and what failed in that test. The manufacturers then work through an iterative process and resolve any bugs just like they would anything else. And when they get to the end, they end up with a declaration of conformance that they can then send and it gets reviewed by the OMBIF office. And then the OMBIF office will list it on their website. And the website is the only place that you should it's, that's the holy grail. That's where you go to make sure that a manufacturer who claims conformance actually has passed the test. Right. Well, that's interesting. And 500 members seems like a lot to me. It's been going fast. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you look at the show floor at IC West here, the, you know, you're walking around, there's lots of OMBIF logos and member yeah. placards and everything. All of the major players in the industry are part of OMBIF. So I'm, I'm speaking to some integrators. Right. And there's an organization... Um, of integrators that has a similar you know, consortium of people and they get together to set standards. And it benefits me as a buyer because I can pick up the phone and I can get an integrator anywhere in the country in any state, right? Right. And with your organization, I can see if who I'm using in my studio is on that list and using the right stuff. Because when you know, we do these big construction projects and if you're a buyer, there's where you know what's going on. And the construction guy comes in and says, oh yeah, this is the best camera, this works great. And it turns out it's out of a cereal box and you get ripped off, right? This really sounds like this is setting a standard that I can rely on. Now, right. if somebody tries to say their conformance is there and it falls below or it's not, how do you guys keep track of How do you police that to make sure they're not pulling a fast one on you? Right. And, and then we have, in the last year, we actually launched a, uh, an education and enforcement campaign. And when we went out, we've been monitoring the internet, looking out there for who's making claims of conformance who aren't a member, who haven't even followed the conformance Are they doing process. that? We have found people doing that, ah, yeah. That's amazing. Well, it's, it's free society, that's what you get. A lot of it's about education, though. A lot of yeah. the people don't actually realize that they they need to follow this process. And they might they can download. We, our specifications are available publicly on the internet. It's a conformance process. It's a member process. Oh, so some people might say they're in conformance, not trying to rip anybody off, but they're just not... Get it. And mm. they, they have to belong to your organization for that to right. pass. Yeah. So when we've gone back to them and we've had that conversation, we've you know they've joined and they've followed the process, yeah. and it's actually been very positive. And so that's one of the things that we're doing a lot more outreach and a lot more education to try and make sure people are aware of exactly the benefits. The thing that we have to be careful of is if if we if we don't police that and we don't protect that, then the, the OMBRIF kind of brand and that, that level of conformity is at risk. So we do take it very seriously. Yeah, you should. Um, yeah. And we want the, the benefits that we're offering will not be there if we if we end up letting this kind of go organically and oh, everybody I agree. can claim it. So, so I worked at Disney, right? Right. Mickey Mouse, the most recognized icon in the world still to this day. Yes. Somebody puts on a Mickey Mouse suit in front of a Hollywood theater, they're down there taking care of it. They protect the brand. Right. And that's that goes to the integrity and quality. Right. So what's a, uh, what's a profile cue? Profile Q is the newest profile that we're launching in probably about the June time frame. Right now we're in the review process, so we, we published, published the spec back in December to our manufacturers. We've got some um, manufacturers now doing prototypes. We've got some prototypes at the booth here today. Um, this is about, this came from about a year ago. We did an exercise when we were really looking about, okay, how is OnVIF being received in the market? What are the system integrators saying? What are the consultants saying? What are the end users saying when they're using OnVIF products? 
the thing that we found was that once they were running, they were great, but we found a quite a, a discrepancy in how easy it was between manufacturer and manufacturer to get the things set up in the first place. Some manufacturers had to check the box, turn on before on, and some manufacturers didn't. Some, you know, there was some variance right. there. So what we decided to do was to make a new profile that basically addresses the setup st stage. This is covering all types of devices. This covers the, uh, a, a video camera, a VMS device, access control device, anything in the future. It's all about that setup stage. IP addresses, uh, authentication, security. Security is really big now. The Internet of Things, the, uh, the way everything's getting connected, going back to the baby monitor story, right. making yeah. sure we have that. We it's more dangerous than ever in a way. It is, and yeah. it's going to get worse. Right. So we have to get ahead of the game, and so we put our advanced security configuration, our advanced security protocols into the profile queue. And that covers a baseline for all types of devices that you get connected. So you will be able to use it to set up all of the, all Onbif Profile Queue devices on the network. So you test that, and why is uh, this recently released client test tool so important? We've been developing the test tool since uh, 2010 to be more comprehensive and to cover more use cases. When we first released it, we kind of we, knew, we had a good idea what we wanted it to be, right. but as we go out there in the market and these things get deployed, we recognize we maybe need to be tighter here, we maybe need to be tighter there, because the specifications sometimes can be interpreted incorrectly, yeah. and unless we're testing for that, we don't catch it. Now, do you, by the way, do you retest? So once I get certified, yes. and I belong to your group, and I stick my camera in my end user, and technology advances, maybe that standard now is not the gold standard anymore because technology's advanced. Do we go back and recertify it at that original passing level, or we try to upgrade it, or how do you? If the, when you, the profiles are a milestone in time. The profiles okay, makes sense, based on the technology. Based on the yeah. technology. So once you pass conformance to a profile, the profile doesn't change. Okay. But you will have additional profiles, and that's why we've added Q with the security. New cameras, new technology, exactly. new profile, all right. So as we go to H.265 and 4K, and we go into bigger access control um, implementations, there's going to be new tests and new profiles that actually address those situations. So, what type of people belong to your group? Oh, we have. I mean, the vast camera access control. Cameras I mean. access control. We have uh, founding members access Sony and Bosch. We have Pelco, obviously, who I represent. Yeah. We have Hike Vision. We have Darawa. We on the booth. We've got uh, Bosch and D-Link and a Vigilon and OnCam Grandi. So, if you're on the net with your device, we can, you could be a member, basically. Pretty much. I mean, yeah. if. The majority of the industry is a part of OnBiff and has conformant products. I mean, today we've got 4,400 plus products listed on the website. 4,400? Yes. Wow. They're all right. passing your standard. Right, and, and uh, those that doesn't represent the total number of devices either because the way that the conformance process can work is you can submit a conformance document for a family of cameras as long as they have a, essentially the same function. If there's a, maybe a different lens or something like that, it doesn't yeah. affect the impact. It doesn't impact the software or how the API works. You might have a conformance document that lists five cameras. That, I know that's certainly how uh, Pelco has it. We list a lot of Let's cameras. Let's say I'm a local installer. i got a small family business. I can't afford to belong to these organizations. I don't have the time for it. But I can go to your site, and I know that if I'm selecting this product from these manufacturers, I have the top of the line stuff. That's a benefit to everybody. It is, and the, there is there is a lower user level that we that we specifically created for the system integrator, end user consultant, and the media. When oh, good. So they can belong at a lower level. And they can belong at that lower level. That's a five hundred dollar membership charge, and they get access for a year. To, for a year. Well, that's very reasonable. And they get access to the test tool, so that if they ever have any issues, they can go back and run the test tool, and then they can report if they have any issues. And Onbif takes reports. We're going to be putting a form on our website soon that allows yeah. people to make. Uh, uh, report issues, so OMIF can help uh, work with the manufacturer to get these things resolved. What's a uh, what's a developer's plug fest? That's an intriguing intriguing name. In, yes, the plug fest are two, we do two a year, and they, these are where the manufacturers come together and work as a team to make sure that what we're implementing in each other's software back ends is actually working. So oh, they like get plugging together. leaks, so to speak. Exactly. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. All right. So it's a really good event. I know the developers and the engineers that go, they always report very positive things. They always find issues. And by doing that and having the industry work together, which, by the way, I mean, I go back to, you know, 10 years ago, this type of activity would have almost been unheard of. Now, the, when you see manufacturers who are competing against each other, getting in a room and solving industry problems, yeah. it's only going to benefit the installers, integrators, dealers, and the uh, end users. As a member, if I have the latest widget, right, and I got a patent, and I don't want anybody to know what it's about, how do I get around that in the organization? I'm not well, going to share the nuts and bolts of right. technology, but am I going to be hesitant to want to participate 
if, if I'm in competition with you directly. I imagine people are in, comp in right. competition, right? Yeah, I mean, every, we're, in, we're in open competition. That's one of the yeah. rules of membership that we acknowledge Which that. Which builds right. the best product. That's exactly. capitalism for you. Exactly. All for it. All right. Exactly. So we, we are in open competition, but at the same time, any standards organization is working on the core groups of features, right? So what that means to us is that we can, we can still be in competition and have differentiated features. You know, I know in the last two weeks, we've had hundreds of submissions for new products. I, you know, as, as they come in, oh, we've been getting lots of new products, in, and that's because at the IC West show, a lot oh, of people yeah, that's true, yeah. uh, uh, are launching new products. The thing is, every single one of those companies will have some differentiator in the product, but that core competency of streaming video, audio, access control, whatever that core piece is, that's still going to be there. Now, if you look at a, let's, I'll just talk about my own product because I know what that is. You know, one Pelco. of the, one of the yeah. things that Pelco does is that we have some really new technologies with. with wide dynamic range and things like that. That doesn't require an API change. That's just, it's still going to work and the capabilities that those cameras offer is going to be kind of just built in. You don't need any change to Wombu. And then when we go to the plug fest, it will still just work. And when we come to a show, when you install it in a site, it will still just work with Wombu. What are you uh, doing about terrorism? Cyber terrorism and internet terrorism. Right. I mean, that's, that's what I worry the most about. Yeah. I'm not worried about the guy in the mall blowing me up. I, I have a solution for that that I carry right. around in my pocket, right? But, you know, hacking my Quicken, looking at my house on a camera, right. those are serious concerns, and we know, without saying the names, what countries do it. What do you do about your membership? Do you screen your members to make sure they're not part of an evil axis that wants to, you know, hack stuff? Most of the people that are members are well-known organizations Big established and companies. Organizations, yeah. right. So right. We, don't, we don't really have any particular concerns about that. So a guy from Iraq wheels in a cart of... Uh, Right. Analog cameras that says he wants to join. You're getting a little suspicious and check them out. We'd, put, we'd probably want to ha have a look right. at that. Right, but good. we're an open organization. We do accept membership applications from all sorts of people. But um, for the that that problem hasn't come up. Chuck, I'll let you know if it does. All right, good. But uh, I think we're I think we're doing okay right now. <laughs> How can we learn more about uh, on Biff? Well, obviously, the if you're at the show, the best thing to do will be to come see us at see our booth. And if we'll, we have a booth uh, coming up in IFSEC and av as is as well. If you want to learn more over the internet, the onbif.org website. Is that org. Let's say org. that again because everybody types dot com. They don't listen. Yes. Right, good. Just search for onbif in Google and we will, you will find us. It will be the first link. When are we going to have uh, robot security guards? Is it coming? Robot, that, you know, that's a profile Z, we'll call it. That might be a couple Z. of years <laughs> out, well, but, you know, I, I used I'd, to work, I'd love to join you on that one. Yeah. I, uh, one of my clients used to be uh, Idealab, and I got called a couple years ago because a guy wanted me to review a robot he was working on for security. I said, what are you going to do with it? We're going to sell for 120000 I said, guards aren't going to buy right. that. But they're thinking about leasing it. But a serious question, really. Do you think the industry is going towards the technology faster than it's, and going away from the, the physical body? The physical body was the thing up until 10 years ago. Now the technology is there. You really don't need a guard in a lot of places. The camera does a better job. Camera doesn't fall asleep, right? In those large installations, when you're looking at hundreds of potential camera feeds, yeah. there's, no, there's no way one, one guy behind a desk can look at them Can't all. do it. But what, what technology can do with, is with, with the use of analytics, with the use of you know, better user interfaces and alert systems, it can help guide that individual into looking at the right place at the right time. Automatic alarms and pointing you and waking you up right. and doing stuff, yeah. It, yeah, we used to put our guards at the studios, they would not look at a camera more than two hours right. and rotate them out. Because yeah. your eyes roll up in your head, you know, yeah. that's it. I mean, ultimately, the, the one thing that the, I don't see for a long time is decision making. When something happens in a site, there has to be a decision made. And I, I go back to the, uh, the UAV uh, market. You know, the, there's, there's a human decision point where you That's have to true. decide what yeah. to do. Because the, the thing can fly around all day long and see certain things, but it's not going to pull the trigger. It's not going to report anything back without yeah. a human being involved. I think that's going to be the same in the security industry for quite a while. Who's going to win the World Series? Well, I watched Back to the Future Part 2 last uh, week, and, <laughs> and apparently, according to that movie, the Cubbies are going to win this year. <laughs> But I'm a Cardinals fan, so I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna root for the Cardinals and see what they do this year. All right, well, Stuart, great. Thanks a lot. It's been really great talking to you. Thanks Pleasure. for coming on Security Guy Radio. Thanks.